Just three months before the municipal election, the Ontario government is reportedly planning to cut the number of seats on Toronto City Council by almost half. The Toronto Star, citing conservative sources, is reporting legislation will be tabled as early as Monday to reduce the number of councillors from 47 to 25 ahead of the October municipal election. The move would redraw boundaries to match federal and provincial ridings. Not surprisingly, it's not a popular prospect with city councillors. I'm surprised that uh, the, a change would be made like this kind of in the, in the middle of the night, um, in the middle of an election. Uh, people have registered to run, they've raised money, they've spent money. But it's not all grumbling from the council chambers. Ward 39 councillor Jim Karagiannis tweeting, going to federal boundaries, bring it on. Scarborough agent court here, I come, thanks premier. And Ward 5's Justin J. DeCiano rather, says that this makes sense for so many reasons. Thank you, Premier Ford Nation, for your leadership on this important governance issue. And another Ford cut could impact the comeback of two former political heavyweights. The Premier may also be cancelling the planned regional chair elections in Peel, where former Conservative leader Patrick Brown is running, and in York Region, where former Liberal Cabinet Minister Stephen Del Duca is running. The deadline to file for a nomination is today at 2 p.m. And some angry voters aren't taking the possible cuts to council sitting down. A rally is already planned at Queen's Park for today at 6 p.m. Hundreds of people expected to attend. Now, the Danforth community continues to pull together in the wake of last Sunday's shooting rampage that left two people dead and 13 others wounded. Vigils have been held to honor the victims, and tonight there will be another show of support for the Greektown neighborhood. Business owners on the strip will step out onto the sidewalks and stand for a moment of silence for the victims. The Taste of the Danforth says it will also go ahead as planned. Organizers are encouraging the entire city to attend. The father of a boy who drowned last year during a school camping trip says that he is relieved charges have been laid. 15-year-old Jeremiah Perry was on a field trip in Algonquin Park last summer. He had been swimming with a group of students when he went underwater and didn't surface. He was reported missing on July 4th, and his body was found a day later by search and rescue divers. A teacher, Nicholas Mills of Caledon, has been charged with criminal negligence causing death. According to the Toronto District School Board, the teen hadn't passed a mandatory swim test before the trip. That should never have happened. If you didn't successfully pass a swim test for a trip like this, like a portage, a multi-day portaging trip through Algonquin Park, uh, if you can't swim, you shouldn't have been on the trip. And the board said weeks after Perry's death that he was among 15 of 32 students on the trip who had not passed that mandatory swim test. Stricter policies have since been implemented. Now, coming up just after 7 o'clock, we'll be speaking with a spokesperson from Youth Safe Outdoors, a group that works to keep and protect children on similar trips. There are reports that the Ontario government will allow private dispensaries for marijuana with the announcement coming early next week. This is what Premier Doug Ford had to say about this back in June. This is a path that we've never went down. This is a path that, uh, that the federal government has dumped on all the provinces. But my priority is to make sure that we protect our children. We don't make the mistakes of the previous Liberal government putting a pot store right beside a school, which is absolutely ridiculous, and it won't happen under our administration. But we are going to uh, sit down with our caucus, discuss it, uh, discuss it with all the municipal leaders and mayors across this great province. According to Vice News, the Ford government plans to overturn the previous Liberal government's decision for a monopoly on cannabis sales via the LCBO. And the Globe and Mail reports that the government will announce their plans next week and it will mirror the Alberta model. It allows for privately owned stores to sell marijuana with a license from the Liquor Commission. 607 here on BT. We're going to send it down to Roger and Winston next.